would you say that the founders were wrong to separate church and state as they did? I'll just, I won't say any more than to repeat um, <laughs> what Pope Leo XIII said in a famous letter, which is that, um, you know, it's, it's good that, that Catholics have found such favor in the United States. He was writing in the 19th century and the churches are flourishing, but that it would be even better if the church had the support of the laws, which doesn't necessarily mean that it should be in the enshrined um, confessional state. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a very delicate way of putting it, that if, if, if the Catholic faith had the support of the laws, that would, it, it would in some ways be more ideal. Um, the other thing I would say is the um, separation of church and state is not a, a phrase that actually appears in in uh, uh, it, it appears in, in in Jefferson's writings, but it doesn't appear, for example, in the Constitution. Um, doesn't appear in the Declaration of Independence. Um, and I think there's a. I would give a good reason for that, which is that ultimately that's that that's impossible. Again, there is no such thing as secularity. I think there will always be some religion. It may not be a religion with priests and, uh, you know, pastors as you and I would recognize them. The priests and pastors might be Ibrahim Kindi or whoever, but the social order will always enshrine some religion or other. And therefore, the, to speak of a radical separation of religion and state is um, an impossibility. It's not like whether or not it's desirable or not. It's just doesn't happen. What it's it's not who we are as human beings, which is rational. It's, it's religious animals. We always enshrine some religion. Uh, I I tend to agree with that. I know Andrew Sullivan would certainly agree with that, and we certainly can point to um, the. I mean, you can just see the characteristics of the CRT stuff as a religion, and especially in Oof. hating and wanting to kill apostates like myself. Like, as I as I walked away from the Democrats, man, they really came at me and tried to kill me. They tried to they doxed me. They got me fired. They called me racist. Did all these terrible things to me. Hurt my family. Hurt my kids. Got me banned from coaching Little League. All these things uh, because I, you know, ditched the Democrats because they were going crazy. Here's my last question to you, and I really appreciate the time and energy. Um, this has been really educational for me, and I think for people listening as well. And again, your book is tremendous. I, you know, don't agree with everything that's in it, but it is a pleasure to read, uh, certainly from a prose and a memoir perspective, and the questions, the unbroken thread, discovering the wisdom of tradition. Uh, everybody, go out there and pick it up. It is a fascinating and easy yet complex and nuanced read uh congratulations on that here's my here's my last question um we talked earlier about how um autonomy maximal autonomy leads to, leads to disappointment and an embrace of socialism which leads to an all-encompassing state i'm i i read all-encompassing state there to be a negative as you described it but I'm also hearing you advocate for a little bit more proactivity on the part of the government. I think one of the criticisms that can be levied against socialism, communism, aside from the distribution and all those problems, uh, is, is that it's too much control, humans are fallible, too much control centralized and, and, and can be corrupted and taken over. So like we, we repel at the notion of an all encompassing state. Uh, you know, political Catholicism, Catholic integralism, to me, that is a increasing a state or state power or involvement in the state uh, in your personal life. Is there a contradiction in these ideas here? Uh, I'm feeling it. Um, maybe you can show me how it's not. Well, I mean, um, uh, several points. The first is that um, uh, the... Uh, what we've been talking about with political Catholicism, um, because, or political Christianity, I could say, because um, subsidiarity is such an important concept in Christian political thought, and that is that um, in any given situation, a larger unit shouldn't interfere 
um, with the workings of a smaller unit unless that smaller unit can't solve its own problems. So therefore, if a problem can be solved in the family, the town shouldn't interfere with it. If the town can solve a problem, then um, you know the central state shouldn't um, uh, interfere with it, and so on. So um, if you take um, Christian political thought seriously, you have this um, kind of barrier against um, uh, bigness for its own sake in the concepts of subsidiarity. Um, and the other thing I would say is that, um, you know, people who think, uh, look, a state that um, favors Christianity or tries to make it easier for people to become Christian would, um, you know, be a kind of, I don't know, monstrous authoritarian state, is just to keep in mind that um, if you don't have um, God in the public square, specifically the God of the Bible, whom, as you'll encounter him, is 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 distinguished by being by being a reasonable God, a humane God, um, and um, you know a, his entrance into the West's political history did not lead to um, oppression, but rather tamed oppression. Right. In other words, um, you have this monumental moment for example in the repentance of the of the the roman emperor theodosius theodosius as roman emperor his 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 predecessors were worshipped as god emperors to be a good roman meant you had to worship in the imperial cult right that's a vision of unbound human power and because there's no god above it the emperor you know as as a kind of deity has a kind of cult um, and his and his successors as well um, then comes Christianity and says, no, 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 there is a higher power. And even the emperor is ultimately subject to this higher power. And Theodosius, when he at one point crossed the Catholic bishops and ordered the executions of certain people who had rioted, um, then the Catholic bishops were angry at him. He had to do penance. So you had the emperor, you know, removing his imperial ring, removing his imperial robes and bowing before um, this this apostle of this, this new religion, relatively speaking, in the empire. So um, that is really the vision of political Christianity, is that even even the powers over you who might be very powerful are ultimately, their powers are limited before before God. Um, and so the inter it's, it's precisely the loss of God as of the West that coincides with the rise of the worst kind of totalitarianisms. Fascism, communism, these, these were precisely marked by the fact that they said, and here we make four circle to my own story when I began, I said, if man isn't a creature that's bound to a creator who asserts certain rules for him, then you can do anything. You can throw people in a gulag, you can throw people in a concentration camp, you can kill the elderly and the disabled because they are just useless eaters and so on and so forth. So um, the vision that I'm talking about, I don't think uh, is, is an invitation to authoritarianism. If anything, we are now headed to this kind, a new kind of liberal secular uh, totalitarianism, especially you see it with um, the advantage they're taking of the lockdowns and so forth. Um, and, and political Christianity, I think, is the only antidote to say, well, we are going to have some God enshrined in the public square. We're going to have some altar enshrined in the public square. Let it be a reasonable, humane God that throughout history... Um, tame the kind of big and small would-be tyrants of Europe rather than uh, the god of CRT, the god of gender ideology, um, the god of, AO, you know, uh, the democratic socialists of America or whoever. Um, let it be the true god. And I'll stop there.